Over here, I have a list of use cases to help you understand when it's appropriate to use an option set. I would say a good rule of thumb is you want to have a good reason to use an option set. Don't just default it to it. Uh, don't just default to it just because it's a list of choices. Again, you can manage those in data types. So there's very specific uh, scenarios where you're going to get a lot of benefit out of it. There are some scenarios where you need to be careful. And then, of course, other scenarios where option sets are not a good way to go. So for really good, easy use cases, um, we're going to look on the left here, uh, marital status, like I mentioned, publication status, right, draft, archive, publish, user types, right? So if you have multiple user um, definitions, so if it's a marketplace, you've got buyers and sellers. So if you notice the common trend between those, these are very contained lists. There are only a few different choices. Um, and there are options that are not going to change, right? Once you set them up, they're pretty much going to be the same all the time. And your users don't need to have control over these choices. Now, looking at this use cases where we want to be careful, right? This middle section here, categories, industries, countries, app pricing plans. These are all good use cases for option sets, but only if the list of choices is relatively small. Um, and for me, the rule of thumb is a couple dozen. Anything more than that, things get really cumbersome working with option sets in your editor. Uh, if you're going to have hundreds of categories uh, to offer your users in the application, go with the data type instead. It's much easier to work with um, because you have that app data view, which presents everything in the editor in a table format, um, and you can see it all. You can't actually see option set attributes in a table format like that, and let alone being able to edit in bulk, okay? If you ever need to edit you know, your list of choices in a mass bulk way, uh, data types are gonna be the best way to do that. And then some use cases that you don't want to go with option set, um, like I've mentioned before, anytime your users need to customize, so if there's custom team roles that they are in control of, custom departments that they're creating for their company, uh, you know, the, they can't create those in the option set. So it just immediately rules it out. There's really no way around that. Keywords and tags are, we see this come up a lot. Um, it, it's tempting to create these in the option sets, but these are items that can easily grow in size, uh, especially if your users uh, need to be able to work with many other keywords and tags. And then the last one that I want to touch on, because we've seen it come up a lot with our own clients, is time slots. If you're working with any kind of booking functionality, scheduling, um, it can be tempting to create a list of time options, right? 1 p.m., 2.30, 4 p.m., right? At whatever interval and create a choice for every single one. The problem with that is that option set um, choice labels are not dates and times. They're not formatted as a date and time. So you can't really do uh, date math or time math with it. Uh, they're just text. Right? So you can't really get a lot out of it. Now, of course, you can create custom attributes and kind of hack your way through it, but there's really no reason to do that. Just manage your time slots um, through a traditional data type structure. There's also a lot of great plugins out there to help you generate dates and times dynamically.